My name is Andrea Tal, and I work as the artistic director of the Contemporary Image Collective, CIC, or Marcas el Sur al Moastra, in Cairo, Egypt. Um, CIC is a cultural space. It exists since 2004, has moved in different locations in, in West Ballet, and it really does different things. But uh, one of the important lines of our work is cultural production mainly visual culture production in uh, photography and printing. So we have uh, high-end digital printing services for cultural workers. We have uh, scanning, we offer a uh, darkroom to do analog development and printing, uh, silkscreen printing, things like this. We also have a library space where people can come and work. And then next to this we do programs, uh, curated programs, um, things like exhibitions, workshops, educational programs, a lot of film screenings and we also are a bit specialized to work in things related to thematic topics um, that tend to take us quite a long time so we like to call them long-term projects <laughs> but what we try to do with this is that we try to give time for research we try to give time to meet people because this allows us also to move outside of the maybe closer confines of contemporary art or even culture to go meet people who have a certain life experience or to talk to people who work, do more historical work or social historians. And yeah, I guess I can say a lot of our work also relates to social movements, to maybe the stories that are not so easily to find or are more, a little bit more hidden. This might be um, uh, like right now, the stories of uh, early feminists in, in Egypt, but it can also, uh, we've worked uh, about things like um, people who have the experience of imprisonment, for example, or the psychological effects of the current situation we are living in here. Uh, you see it touches on socially, also maybe political topics, and often it has this element of, of research or of engaging critically with, also with history. Like another project we do is for example, relates to or looks at the Egypt and specifically Cairo, the role Cairo played in the 1950s and 1960s for liberation movements on the African continent. And so we're trying to find out more of these stories and who was here at that time. And then we sometimes work with cultural workers to try to relate to this history from now and to really ask what might this mean for us today, this history that is now a bit hidden, you know, in our in our city. Yeah, maybe I go back to before the pandemic, because for us, already in the situation before COVID, the to learn that we can work with the NACP was a very important news, but also was a big relief because at that time we had for years not been able to work with anyone continuously in, in terms of uh, financial support. And so this already felt like, wow, for, for, for once we can start think a bit more long term, you know, it allows us to just plan a little bit more than always in this end of the year, we have to reinvent the, the world basically, <laughs> or the, at least the place um, in terms of planning. So that, and then the pandemic came and obviously Everything I just said was <laughs> like exponentially bigger. <laughs> um, I, in in our situation, is that it was a structural and a program um, grant. So, we're obviously it affected the programming much more than the structure because um, the structure continues to exist and it, you know. Mm, continues to have the same requirements but then for the program obviously for some time it wasn't possible to program and and we had to shwaya reinvent things but actually I like to say that the parts that are included in our program which is the continuation of our uh, uh, screening programs called desync 
So these have, we've built them up before, but, uh, and we will continue them, but in these two years, we really had the possibility to do them whenever we had a chance to, but it's before this was not possible because we always had to, to see how we can finance them. The other parts we realized in the program, they're maybe a bit smaller or we did, you know, one where we said we can maybe do two. This is also related to the situation of, of COVID, but actually we, we were able to, in the end, specifically this year, because this year so much more is possible, we were finally able to realize quite a lot of the things. So we, we just finished an exhibition with uh, three artists um, working around the question of representation of the female body, but also uh, with the photographic image in a bit, working in reference to the photographic image, but not so directly only with the photographic image. So we see collages, we see images uh, drawn after the photograph, something drawn after the photographic image or writing printed over the photograph, for example. So there's a lot of disengagement also with text and the image. In this period of the last two years, um, also in a way, in the beginning, the pandemic, besides all the insecurities and panics it caused, it also allowed us to take some time to focus more on the internal structure of our organization. So we've been able in this time to add a position that we weren't able to fill for a very long time of an of a office manager, which obviously for all our internal work is extremely key position. And also we've developed a, a policy um, a workplace safety policy that uh, you know includes things like uh, anti-harassment and uh, bullying and things like this. So really, after the first weight we felt from the pandemic and everybody you know being very concerned in the beginning, just with, with family and with dealing with this new situation, it really allowed us in 2000 and the second half of 2020 and then 21. To, to really focus on some internal, internal things. So to try to take this time to, to really develop things on a structural level.